thank you so much. I joined the fire service three, four years ago. At that time, I wasn't knowledgeable about what fire was all about. But as a fireman, or what we call emergency responder, your work is mainly. He's clapping, 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 clapping. clapping. Your work is mainly for emergency purposes or purposes. And whenever you call the phone, not just for fire, it could be any other thing, it could be life threatening issues, you know, like someone is about them. For instance, in the Aruwe where I work, you know, and you work with medics. Most times, before they call the medics, they would have reached us, especially when it has to do with, you know, things that happen on the plant. We cover we cover areas. We cover areas like the plant, an energy plant, community, Arui. These are the three areas that we cover. And our job as emergency responder has to do with life threatening issues, earthquakes, environmental disasters, fire outbreak, uh, life, you know, at risk. You know, even animals, they call us, you know, they come rescue people out of animals. Yeah, yeah. We work out of fire fighting. Yeah, like I said, it has to do with everything that concerns life. You know, for instance, when I started this job too, there was this uh, crocodile, you know. When you go to uh, Mikinima Natural Park, you will see one pool, you know, that they got. There are people use swim and all that. There was a time when they had issue with this crocodile trying to, you know, we don't know how, but yeah, the crocodile just came up and was trying to, you know, endanger the people who were using the swim. Our office, you know, was phone 3033, 3034 was called for us to, you know, go uh, rescue, you know, that people because they were actually using the swimming. Fortunately, before we go to that place, they called, uh, there is this nature park people. They are also, you know, in charge of, you know, snakes, animals, you know, so they were there already, strangers, they were there already, and they have attended to that, uh, that issue before we go to that place. So, as an emergency responder, basically, what we do is to save lives. We also save properties, we save the environment. You know, for instance, if there is you know something that has to do with fire outbreak here now, if you come here, we do not just save life, we make sure that the property at least will be safe, even though it should be cut, it has been cutted with fire, but we try as much as possible to save the little one we can. And then when it comes to the environment, we will do the same thing. It could be a bushfire, it could be a tree, you know, so many things, and we will try to make sure that it doesn't exceed, doesn't affect the environment too much. We'll just rescue the part or do the one to the little we can to you know, bring back peace. We also work with you know, uh, police and the army to maintain peace and order. It's not just, our job is encompassing. It's, in fact, one in too many. When there, is, uh, when there are issues, if you remember June 10th, or June 15th, two years back, when this cinema incident happened at the roundabout, we were called, I was on duty, we were, we did night breaking morning, we were called to follow the army, uh, the soldiers at the roundabout, you know, in MLNG to the roundabout, to make sure that we stop, you know, this, uh, you know, community fight, because some persons were coming from one area, and then some persons in cinema, you know, they found to me and all that, they were already at the roundabout, leading or heading to, some of them were already at the IA gate, but the few ones that were heading from the roundabout to the IA at that time, we have stopped. And we are among those persons that you know, make sure that peace returns that particular moment. So, as a firefighter, you must be fit, physically fit and mentally fit. You know, that's why most times when you resume, they ask you, are you okay? If you make sure that you're not okay, they ask you to leave. You go for treatment, you go for medical assessment you go for in fact you put yourself to order before you now resume to you because we don't expect you to have issues you know that has to do with your health because our job is demand it means tasking it's tasking so you also need to you know be at your emergency we say two minutes not exceeding three minutes once there is any emergency our duty or our rule is that you have to be there in two minutes, not exceeding three minutes time. 
anything short than three minutes, other than three minutes, or more than three minutes will fail. Because especially when it has to do with his life, one minute, one second, somebody can die. So, so before you put on your coveralls, your sorry, uh, emergency response uh, gadgets, you know, your helmets and everything, you should not exceed two minutes or three minutes. In fact, by three minutes, you're already at that. Uh, and you tell me where you know that event happens. So there are a lot of things. You know, so what if the venue is minimal to moderate? That is that is our standard. That's the standard. In fact, it's a world standard. It's a world class standard. Three minutes. You can exceed it, but we're just saying that on your own, be prepared that two or three minutes, especially when it's a closed range. Uh, the place is you know close. Uh, so um, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I think when next I'll be called to do this, if I'm prepared, I will say more. Thank you. So before you step up from the podium, I know that you graduated as a surveyor, are you? An architect. Yeah. How were you able to transition from being an architect to being a firefighter? Okay, you know in life you meet a lot of When I started working, I worked as a, as a helper, a nursing helper. From a helper, from a nursing helper, you know, I graduated to scaffolding, um, lab assistants, and all that, duties inspector. And then in fire station, we have a lot of persons. In fact, at the start of the NLA, for you to work in fire station, you must be a graduate. In the past, it used to be OMB holders. But when we came on board, they changed that status to said no graduate so we have architects and i can tell you that one of the design the new fire station i and others one brand guy we are the ones that designed the new fire station professionally we are supposed to be at the gate but because we work in the same one he asked us our line manager and line head and including our fire chief said no we have two architects in the station here and we brainstorm most times i will come back i'll go to see Sometimes we will meet even when I'm on off to make sure that we present our design. And then one of the days we were presenting our design, somebody asked, Architect, did you know there were people like this in the fire station? And from that day, I think some of the respects that we never had, you know, we started, we started building that respect because when they were telling them, even when they were saying, say, no, this is fire station, this is how it's supposed to be and all that. We created a world standard design. And when they went back and checked what we gave to them, they, you can only remove just little things from that design. And that design is what NLMB will build in maybe the future. Because the idea is rather than me going to other facilities to train, why not we have our own fire station that's of world standard where we can be training our own and we are people too, you know, to train. For instance, at the moment now we go to Lagos, like a place in Para that's owned by future Co Park Prime, that's the only recognized fire training ground in Nigeria. And that's mm -hmm. where we go usually for two weeks or one month training. So when that is done in NLMG, rather than going out to Lagos, NLMG will be training her firemen and then we will be training other companies mm -hmm. or other company firefighters. So as an architect, you're trained to be versatile. You know, God even said, you know, God is an architect. God is an architect. So yes, he said he's an accountant. <laughs> So, so, so you are trained to do so many things. So I once worked as a safety officer. I once worked as a safety officer. And while I was working as a safety officer, I interacted with some firemen. But you know, when the opportunity came for me to come in, I forgot those things that have to do with fire because I was basically more of safety. The questions I answered at that time were more of HSC, not own fire. And then I was surprised when that list came out, I was the only body that made that list. In fact, we were 36, only four passed. And that four, I was the only body. Two people, two Yoruba, one Igbo, and one Nigerian. So it's just. Thank you. 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 For me, if you ask me what did they do at Fire Center, I said the only thing was Fire. Fire is uh, good for the office. 
told us that there is more to painting of fire than we see. Uh, saving of life, it is saving of uh, animal life, as the case may be, ensuring that because of your firefighting, that you do not destroy properties or riders here much, as much as possible, that you can safeguard the property at least for future use or for proper to, to give back purpose. So if we did not come for fellowship this evening, most of us will not be back at right in time. We want to thank us for all of us that made it for the meeting this evening. And I want to encourage all of us to go out to root thing. It's a good thing to belong to and to have in any community. Uh, we might have our little setbacks here and there, but that does not make root trees not good. If not for root trees, Inima girls will not have chairs that they are united by the parents. If not for root trees, about 50 beneficiaries in this community benefited from uh, palliatives that they are sent by Rotary District now or for one. If not for Rotary, uh, uh, moving, walking aids, they are sent to this community, courtesy of Rotary District now or for one. And a number of other things, they didn't have reason to come and donate life vest to us here because there is a Rotary club in this place. All we need to do we should have to market our Rotary Club. Thank God that the uh, Rotary Club of Bonnie Island is proposing something that we should appear on the day of the installation as one Rotary from Bonnie Island. And it's a good and a welcome development because it's just like the our Supreme Project is going on. In as much as we, we are not getting support financially as we should get, but my happiness is the project is ongoing and that project will definitely come to stand. And when it comes to stand, it will sell Rotary better. So I encourage only one of us to ensure that Rotary stays alive as much as we can. Thank you very much.